Welcome to Bet on It College Championship Edition, if you will, powered by Wager Talk TV. I am Kelly Stewart, joined by Marco D'Angelo and Joe Ranieri of WagerTalk.com. Let's bring those guys in. We're going to kick it right off because I don't want to have any excess banter on this show. Pac-12 Championship, <laughs> that's right, Friday, Fox, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Uh, Utah is a three-point dog in Las Vegas to USC. Total, 67. Marco, you're the one that told me no more banter, so I'm following the rules here with you. Mm. Well, okay, Kelly, apparently, according to Gregory on YouTube, we we talk too much, you and I and Joe, and we got to get right to the point. You know, we're wasting mm. eight minutes of Should we day. do a deep dive? Uh, oh, no. <laughs> yes. I heard also we don't do enough deep dives. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there, there's other. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I wasn't supposed if to. If you want to go to one of those snooze fest uh, shows, uh, be my guest. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm here to have fun. We're gonna give you information and we're gonna have fun. Damn it, let's do it. And we're gonna uh, rapid you... fire off some picks. Like I'm not yeah. deep, deep diving into some terrible game like Broncos Ravens, or <laughs> for like 30 minutes. That's that's ridiculous. Let's give our yeah. pick, give our 45 seconds of analysis, and get the hell out of here. I got games That's to it. watch, games to bet, a life to live. Right. Kelly, we got Utah. And if you remember at the beginning of the season, I was really high on Utah. I said they were going to win the Pac-12 championship. I didn't think that was going to be a possibility going down the stretch the way it was going. But here we are. They've got a chance to win the Pac-12 championship. That would make me happy. Also makes me happy that uh, I like the situation for this game. This game will be played here in Las Vegas at Allegiant Stadium in USC. They're playing well, no question about it. And they served me well last week against Notre Dame. But I got to ask the question. There is so much on the line for USC here. This is going to be their third monster game in a row. They played UCLA two weeks ago in the Bitter rivalry. They both went up and down the field. They escaped that game with the three-point victory. Then they came back. Another huge game against a rival, Notre Dame. Got that done. And what did it do? Well, it put them on the doorstep. Now they control their own destiny. All they got to do is win, and they're in. They cracked the top four. Not so fast. I'm going to go with Utah. And the reason for that is Utah is built to be, beat this type of team. They play defense. Not many teams play defense in the Pac-12. Utah, I know they didn't stop them much in that first game. They both went up and down the field, and Utah rolled the dice at the end of the game, a gutsy call. They went for two instead of the extra point and go to overtime, and they got the job done. And I think that's going to have a lot of people swinging to the USC side here because that game was in Utah. Now it's on a neutral field. and USC, that offense, the way it's rolling. But I'll tell you what, Utah has another hidden advantage in this game. They were here last year and played in this game in this stadium. That's huge for them. Been there, done that. I'm going to take the dog. They win outright 31-27, Utah. Joe, really interesting uh, this year for the college championship games. There are five teams seeking revenge, and I kind of have that in the back of my mind here, right? And uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure Ralph will have something for us here with TNA at the end of the segment, but it's something I have circled, and I'm kind of hesitant to bet against those teams seeking revenge. What are your thoughts with the, the first big one here in the Pac-12 championship? So, um, spoiler alert, just switch over to Ralph when you get a chance here. But uh, basically, Cal, we've seen this a number of times. And uh, the numbers that I got were 23 and 23 ATS, those teams seeking revenge in this spot. So it's about, it's a coin flip uh, situation. So there's no real edges to be had as far as the revenge goes. And Ralph will go more into that, I am sure. But there are a few other interesting uh, notes uh, in some of these matchups. And first and foremost, I'll go right to the total because the total is 67, 68 right now in this matchup. It was 67. It's been getting bet up, and I get it. I understand uh, we got, what, 80-some-odd points the first go-around with these two teams. But it's, it's fascinating. When you have totals of 65 or more 
uh, in these games. We have seen the under go 15 and 9. Uh, we've also seen uh, overs only cash 28, 25, and 1 in enclosed uh, in stadiums. So they're going to be at Allegiant. They're going to be indoors. You would think, oh, it's going to be a fast track. We're going to get all of this scoring. Yeah, not necessarily here. The higher the total, uh, the more profitable it's been to the under. And I love this Utah matchup. I love it because we saw what they were able to do against USC the first time around. Uh, you had Caleb, Wind uh, Caleb Williams was under pressure more against Utah and that defense than he was against anybody else. In fact, it was the most pressure that he has had to deal with in any game this year. That is not going to change. You know what else is not going to change is the fact that that USC defense has been getting by um, just unbelievably with the turnover luck that they have had. You're looking at a Notre Dame team last week, Kel, that actually torched this defense. They were averaging just about eight yards per play in that game. I mean, that is crazy. Notre Dame and that offense was able to uh, gain yardage and a whole lot of it in that game. They just couldn't convert when it mattered there. That's not going to be the same here with Utah. Much like that Notre Dame game, I took the first half under here on the show there. I think it was, uh, is it 32 and a half, somewhere in that 31 and a half. I thought we were going to get more running. I thought we were going to get a little more conservative early on, and then the scoring would happen second half. That under hit. The under in the first half here is 34 and a half, and I'm going to go the same route. Um, I'm going to go under in the first half in this game. I think Utah's going to control the clock. I think Coach Winningham is, uh, they're going to be able to run the ball on this defense. They don't necessarily want to get into a monster shootout here. I think it, uh, it absolutely benefits Utah to hold on to the ball, take the air out of it, and play amazing defense, pressuring Caleb Williams as much as they can. I like the under in the first half, 34 and a half, and... I'm going to wait because I think the public's going to bet this line up here, uh, and I'm going to hammer the under uh, on the full game as well later in the week. Joe, you got to bring up last week in that Notre Dame pick just for Marco. Congratulations to Marco on that winner. We're going to take a little break, if you will, and pivot because I got Ralph Michaels, who I know has some Ooh. TNA that's going to help me out here. There he is, Mr. Ralph Michaels. It is championship weekend, and I know we do things a little bit differently uh, for these championship games, if you will, Ralph. But before we get into that, please let everybody know you've got a red-hot December special over at wagertalk.com. Well, I've been number one or number two in profit at Wager Talk for the last 45 days. My NFL season has been magical. Kelly, on the year... My NFL is now 74.5%. I've had eight straight winning Sundays. I've cashed 11 of the last 12 Sundays, showing a profit 91.7%. Number one in bowls the last five years, 44 and 20, 69%. And number one in NBA in both profit and win percentage the last two years. December is the absolute best month to get an all-access pass. Use the code DEC100 for December. So DEC100 takes $100 off a 30-day all-access package. All sports, 30 days, $199. I love that for us, Ralph. What a deal to get number one and sometimes number two over at wagertalk.com. All right, traditionally we get trends and angles. You give me all sorts of data and nerd charts, but because championship weekend's a little unique, please tell our viewers what we're looking at this week. Well, again, championship weekend bowls are treated a little bit differently. I don't have the traditional trends here because you don't know who you're playing. There's times you may have a week notice. There's times you may have a two-week notice of who you're playing. But you're not planning for this opponent in the summer. You're not prepping for this team during the season. So I throw all those traditionals out. I have six scenarios that I'm going to share with you. Please remember this. Championship week is a very small sample size. You're talking 
six, seven, eight games. Remember a few years ago, there were only four or five championship games. So take the sample size with a grain of salt, but I do want to walk through some scenarios. First off, championship games this weekend, conference championships, do favorites or dogs do better? Well, if I just take every championship game in the last 10 years, the favorites have gone 44.7%. That means the dogs have been a 55.3% play. How about over-unders? Well, again, it's 41 and 45. So the overs have hit 48%. The unders have hit 52%. Nothing that we're going to bet, but at least it makes you aware. So now I wanted to break down some scenarios. What happens when a conference championship favorite is laying 12 or more? Example, Georgia against LSU. Well, when a conference champion has been laying 12 or more, they have only covered 37.8%. That means the dogs have covered 61.2%. And that makes total sense. During the regular season, you may lay it on because, you know, you're, you're looking to go up the rankings. When you're winning your conference championship game, it doesn't matter if you win or lose. Georgia doesn't need style points to get to the playoffs. They just need to be healthy, and they just need to walk away with a win. So conference favorites of 12 or more have covered 37.8%. And in the first half, when they're a big favorite of 12, the average score has been 20.2 to 8.9. They've been plus 11.3 points per game. Let's look at championship teams that got blown out their final game. Now, Coastal Carolina is a little bit of a different scenario because they got blown out because they don't have their stud quarterback. But since 2012, teams that have lost their last game by 20 points or more, like Coastal Carolina, have gone 77.8%. But note, that's only seven winners and two losers, Kelly. So again, as I mentioned, a very small sample size. Going through Twitter and, and looking for some questions people had this week to answer. The biggest question and the one I was asked the most was simple. What happens in the second rematch of the season? UTSA North Texas playing a second time. Utah USC, TCU Kansas State, UCF and Tulane, and Boise and Fresno were all playing for a second time. The team that won the first game has covered 45.8% in the second. So that means the team that has the same season revenge has covered 54.2% of the time. And when teams play for a second meeting, the games have gone under the total 60.3% of the time. Two teams are at home this week. Utah State and Boise, excuse me, UTSA and Boise are at home. The Mountain West and CUSA do not play neutrals. So how does a team that won the first game as a home favorite and playing at home again, like UTSA and Boise, those teams have gone eight and six, 57.1% against the spread. Again, very small sample sizes, but questions you guys have had. And a total. I do like looking at unders in these second games. A lot of situations have led to the under at championship weeks. If teams are playing the same season revenge, like those, uh, like those five I mentioned earlier, and both teams are off a win, like all five teams, UTSA, North Texas, both off wins, Utah, USC, both off wins, TCUK State, UCF and Tulane, Boise and Fresno, all off wins. When these teams are playing the second time, the under has hit 65.8% of the time, 13 overs and 25 unders. So it says to play the under. So a quick recap. Overall, dogs have covered 55.3%. Big favorites have only covered 37.8%. Teams that got blown out in their last game have covered 77.8%. Teams that won the first game have covered only 45.8% in the second game. Teams that won at home as a favorite the first game and are playing at home again have gone 8 and 6, 57%. And when both teams are playing again for a second time and both teams won the previous week, the under has hit 60. 
3% of the time. Good stuff, Ralph. Let everybody know about your Red Hot December special one more time, please. Again, the records have been phenomenal. The code DEC100. I will be having a 5% NFL play this week. I've cast five straight football 5% winners, eight straight winning NFL Sundays, 11 of 12 winning weeks. Again, the code DEC100. Love that. Make sure you guys are following Ralph on Twitter at CalSportsLV. No nerd chart this week, but I won't hold it against you, Ralph. We're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, it's time for the Big 12 Championship. Bet on it gets 100,000 plus downloads, views, and listens each and every week across all platforms. From YouTube to Spotify, from Apple TV to iHeartRadio, there's a good chance it's the first time you're tuning in, so an even better chance that if you have not experienced the professional handicappers at Wager Talk and Sports Memo, we want to change that. Whether you are new to sports betting or just tired of the games of the year and 100 unit locks, we have you covered. As the most popular show on Wager Talk TV, we would like to offer all bet on viewers that have not made a purchase at wagertalk.com or sportsmemo.com this special offer. Use coupon code BETONIT80 and save 80% off any one day package of $15 or more, up to a three day all access pass, which normally sells for $59. Pay only $3 for a regular price 15 package. Only $7 for a 5% top play that normally will cost you $35, or pay under $4 a day when using the coupon on a three-day all-access pass. So to all first-time users, just use coupon code BETONIT80 to save 80% off your first ever purchase at Wager Talk or Sports Memo, and welcome to the family. Welcome back to Bet On It. Before the break, I gave Marco a little pat on the back for his uh, USC pick. And now this one, I'm going to kick him in the nuts because Saturday, ABC, 12 Eastern, K-State at, well, versus, excuse me, in Arlington versus TCU. It's almost like a home game for the Horn Frogs. Two and a half point favorites there. Total 62 and a half. I'm going to wait until, of course, the best bet portion of the show to give my opinion. But uh, Joe Ranieri. Tell me, you're taking my cats here. Oh, you know I'm taking the cats. I have been uh, trying to fade TCU for how long now uh, this season? It has cost me uh, nothing but cash, but I think uh, I think the road ends here. It's been a hell of a season, unbelievable run for Sonny Dykes and company, but, um, and you know this, Cal, this, this game was hoped, wished for after that week eight debacle by K-State in the second half where they lost. Uh, let's see here. You lost your starting quarterback, Adrian Martinez, in the first series of the game. You didn't even get to see this in real time, Cal, because you were on a plane, I believe, uh, when it was happening. Then we watched Will Howard come in. Oh, yeah, he got crushed at one point. They had to bring in the third string guy only to have to bring back in uh, Will Howard a little bit later. And by that time... Yeah, it was too late. The second half comeback by TCU was already there. The thing to know about that game was early, K-State dominated them. Dominated them in that one. It was 28 to 10 in that monster, in that game there. And um, I don't know. Uh, to me, I think we're going to get a similar rush early on here. I think the thing K-State has to worry about is holding off that eventual comeback that TCU is going to have. I think K-State's going to play this game from in front. I think uh, there's going to be some adjustments like we have seen all year long with TCU. I think that uh, it's going to have to be a comeback by TCU later in this game um, because they've been there and done that and have the confidence that they can. But I think, uh, think K-State is coming out. They're going to do exactly uh, what they've done to a number of teams. They're going to smack them early. They're going to go into the half with the lead, only this time they're not going to relinquish it and give TCU the opportunity to make a crazy comeback. So it's K-State early and often to me, K-State money line in that first half, Cal. No need for points. Just take them to win the first half. They will have the lead going into halftime. Yeah, I like that K-State first half angle as well there, Joe. Marco, some question marks on the K-State defense. And uh, even though I'd already had about six high noons, I left the word defense out of my tweet. And I said <laughs> during the KU game, if they this defense plays mm -hmm. like they did uh, versus the Jayhawks, I was going to be a little concerned uh, missing a couple of cornerbacks, uh, a couple of defensive guys on the line that are a little banged up. We're in and out of the game. 
this K-State defense has shown some moments of greatness this year, particularly, sorry, mm. Joe, against your Oklahoma State Cowboys. TCU does have that firepower to be able to score when down two, three scores. We've seen it, Marco. Uh, but I know that you are just like me, and even though you took KU last week, you do have a future on this K-State team, I believe. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just me and uh, a couple other people. But I was thinking, I know you had the over, so you've watched this team several wins. times this year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Season Sorry, wins. I was we cashed also that had up. A... I'm good with that. And I actually yep. used uh, 5% play on them a couple times this year in right spots. Um, Kelly, yes, I was against Kansas State last week because I just didn't like the spot, and we won't go through that again. But I've been against TCU several times this year. I really enjoyed that moment, year. Marco. That was like such <laughs> a beautiful moment for me. I was sitting on the couch watching the game with my dad. And uh, just, I, I, I enjoyed every, I just sucked all of the, the energy and all the Texas fans on my timeline cheering for KU to all the KU fans that I should have blocked years ago. I mean, plus you, plus Adam Trigger. It was just like, I just wanted all of it. It, it was just, you were, it couldn't get any better for you on Saturday. Let's, let's just face it. Okay. Uh, and I wish I could share my timeline of my tweets uh, the, or texts that I get, you know, Kelly is a gracious winner. Let me tell you. And then whenever right. I, and I was actually right. at a hockey game and, you know, I was being funny, you know, I knew the score, but I asked her, I said, Hey, I'm at the hockey game. I haven't seen the uh, USC score. Could you tell me what it is? Mm-hmm. Crickets. Crickets. <laughs> uh, this is a spot that last week a lot of people stepped in front of TCU, as they have all year. But, Kelly, we've picked spots where we've tried to get in front of them. Most of them have worked out. A couple haven't, one of them being that West Virginia game. But last week against Iowa State, everybody was jumping up and down to grab Iowa State because they have a defense. Well, that's true, but you've got to have two elements when you face TCU because I don't care how good your defense is, they're still going to score. We saw that in the first meeting against Kansas State, which Kansas State does have a good defense when healthy. You have to be able to score points as well to match your defense, and that's something Iowa State just doesn't have, and that's why I stayed away from uh, that game last week uh, I actually leaned to TCU, but I didn't want to lay the points with them, but I sure wasn't stepping in front of them. Kansas State can score points, and Joe broke it down uh, perfectly from that first meeting. For Kansas State to have everything that happened during that game and still, you know, end up, you know, they ended up losing by 10, but they had they dominated the game for three quarters of it. This is a spot where the rematch, I do like Kansas State here. And now we talk about it. All the pressure's on TCU. They've worked all year trying to get to this spot. And they've always been, even though they were undefeated, in everybody's mind, they still had to do a little bit more because somebody would leapfrog them. We've seen it happen so many times to these schools. But now that's not happening. They win and they're in. Nobody's going to leapfrog them. And that just puts a whole other dimension of pressure on these kids. I like Kansas State. They're playing with house money. Nobody, you know, expects them to win the game. You know, they lost the first meeting, and it's all TCU, the talk. That's when the dog is the most dangerous. I like Kansas State here. I like everything about him. And Will Howard, how can you not love what he's done? 13-2 to two, touchdown to interception ratio since he's been inserted into the lineup. And remember, when he came into that first Kansas State game, he came in off the bench. You know, this was Adrian Martinez's team. He got all the snaps and stuff. This is going to be a better prepared team. I like him in the rematch, and I don't want to get in the wrath of Kelly again. Go K State. Mm. Oh, I'll get into it in the best bet segment, but my aunt, who is going to the game with me, literally is like, I'm not sure I want us to win because I want someone from the Big 12 represented i almost lost my mind and said i'm not going with you are you insane i would take four sec teams if k-state got to play spoiler in this one that's a good pivot lsu georgia atlanta 18 point underdogs total 51 that's right cbs saturday 4 p.m eastern 
1 p.m. Pacific, Marco D'Angelo. I want to take LSU so bad here. But I text my good friend Megan making money, and I said, Megan, what is going on in Baton Rouge? I need to understand how this team's mentality is, right? They got caught looking ahead to AM last to, to this game last week with AM, in my opinion. Marco, I want to know what your thoughts are here because I made this game 15. So it's 17 mm. and a half, 18. There's starting to be some real value here with the dog. No question. This line's going up and it's going to continue to go up. And Kelly, that misstep last week, although, yeah, that's the great situational spot. Uh, take Texas A&M plus the points net. But the fact that you end up losing the game outright and now, you know, you screwed yourself out of anything, uh, anything bigger that you were hoping for. I don't know that they recover from that. The other part is at times when I watch this Georgia team, you know, the last two weeks, you could say, hey, they look like they were going through the motions. They played a Kentucky team that we have seen you know, glimpses of uh, brilliance from this team at different times this year. And then we've seen them be very mediocre. And Georgia was life and death with them, only winning 16-6 last week against their in-state rival, Georgia Tech. They fell behind early, but then they rolled uh, late 37-14. to Was Georgia maybe just bored during the regular season? They won the national championship last year. They were undefeated. You know, let's just get back to the playoffs when it really means something. And I think that starts Saturday here in the SEC championship game. Uh, LSU, it's been a great story for Brian Kelly in his first season down there. Um, talk about instant legend. I said it, the you know, when we did the show right after the Alabama game, going for two and getting the win. Yeah, you know, he's uh, etched himself in uh, LSU lore immediately. But I think it stops here. I don't know how LSU stops this Georgia offense. And defensively, LSU is going to struggle. When Georgia comes to play with their mind screwed on straight, you're not scoring on this team. And that's where the problem lies. And then when you're laying a big number, um, you know, I missed it at 17. You know, we're at 17 and a half and heading to 18 or more. Uh, you worry about laying points, you know, in a team back on you. But Georgia runs the football so well, I don't have a problem and I don't worry as much about the back door with a team that runs the ball so well. Why? Because when you're just trying to kill clock, you're doing something that you do well and you can add to your score. When you have a passing team that's trying to kill clock by running the football in the fourth quarter, that's a disaster waiting to happen because you end up with three and outs and the other team gets the ball back. That doesn't happen with this Georgia offense. I'm going to go ahead and lay the points with Georgia. I've got them winning 38-17. to 17. Ooh, 38-17. You know what that means, Joe Ranieri. I'm going to let you uh, tell me that you also like the under here because I had an exact feeling this is where you were going. Well, it, it's, it's funny, guy, because um, of, uh, of all the moves here, the steam has come in uh, since the opening on the total. Uh, which, you know, shouldn't surprise people. I believe the last two SEC championships uh, have produced 163 points. So I get it. Uh, they're expecting the SEC has notoriously been, of all of the conference championships, it's been the one that has hit the over the most. Understood there. Uh, but I don't know that this is necessarily, now that it's gone uh, now 51, 51 and a half from the open of 48 and a half, I don't know here, Cal. But I also think there is some value early in this game. Um, you had said it, uh, Cal. It's getting to the point now. LSU is getting 10 in the first half. How many more games do we need to see Georgia start slowly before we realize that they don't really pick it up until the second half. We just watched it again with Georgia Tech. In fact, look at the games over the last month. Uh, it's taken them a little time to be able to get acclimated and adjusted. Games that were far closer than they should have been or eventually got there. But you're telling me a total of 27 in the first half, Cal, and 10 of that you want to give LSU here? I just think there's way too much value here early in this game for LSU 
to do what LSU has done in the past as a monster underdog in these kinds of spots. And that's give Georgia more than they can handle early. Brian Kelly will have these guys ready. Uh, throwing up all over yourself with A&M and Jimbo. Not a great look, but I do think uh, this was the game they wanted to get to. I think they'll be ready. I think they can hang for a little while in this game with Georgia. Eventually, I think Georgia will pull away again late. But as far as the earliness of this game goes, I'm leaning to the under, and I'm leaning to taking those 10 points with LSU. Let Georgia blow them out in the second half if it's going to happen. If not... Uh, this is going to be a uh, a one, at best, two-score game uh, in the fourth quarter. Interesting. I like that angle, Joe. You're absolutely right. Uh, Georgia's had a few moments of uh, flat flatness, if you will, at least mm. in the first half. We're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, it's time for the ACC and Big Ten Championships. Do you want to bet this college football bowl season alongside Dave Koken and Ralph Michaels? Well, we have you covered. When you look among the list of our handicappers, some are known more for specific sports. And when you mention college football, two that jump out are Dave Koken and Ralph Michaels. Mr. Dave Koken has been the all-time profit leader in college football since he joined Wager Talk. And while the regular seasons have been profitable, his performance in the Bulls have been even better going 45-22-1. That's 67%. Ralph Michaels was a previous general manager of Phil Still Publications, voting on all significant college football awards, including the Heisman Trophy, before joining Wager Talk. Ralph's run and bowl action has been stellar, going 44 and 20. That's 69%. Our bowl package price will be 199 with the 149 early bird. You can lock in Dave and Ralph's both for only 198, coming out to just $99 each. That's Dave's 68% and Ralph's 69% bowl records, including any 5% best bets released in bowl season for just 198. Access will cover any college football releases from the Bahama Bowl on Friday, December 16th, through the College Football Playoff National Championship game on Monday, January 9th, from both Ralph Michaels and Dave Koken, and include any 5% best bets. Swag fast before pricing goes back to regular price. Welcome back to Bet on It. It's now time for the ACC Championship, Saturday, ABC, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, Clemson, seven and a half point favorites to North Carolina, total 63 and a half. Joe Rainier, I'm going to go to you here first. You can already probably guess where I'm leaning in this one. Yeah, no, I know where you're going with this one, and you probably know where I'm uh, heading in this one as well. Um, listen, I... <laughs> South Carolina, uh, great job the last two games of the year. They uh, they handled business, and they, for the first time, Cal, exposed uh, that defense of Clemson, uh, showing that it, it wasn't all that this year. Although, and again, the ACC, for that matter, really wasn't all that. We've got a North Carolina team that somehow or another forgot that they needed to keep winning games down a stretch, uh, and it's been life or death over the last couple of weeks with them. But it doesn't change the fact that Drake May, much like Spencer Radler, is more than capable with downs on the outside. That that receiving core, this offense in North Carolina is more than capable to do exactly what we just watched South Carolina uh, do. And that is score some points, take some shots down the field, and be able to take advantage of a young secondary of Clemson that, let's face it, uh, has gotten burned at times uh, this year, most notably last week against South Carolina. I do think Clemson and Shipley against this North Carolina defense, he going to have himself a day. There are going to be quick-hitted touchdowns in this, meaning Shipley's going to run one for 65, right? He's going to break it off. Drake May's going to hit downs for a 45-yard uh, uh, touchdown. I think the scoring is going to come explosively in this one. There are going to be quick scores, and I think the total is going to be over this 63 and a half, 64 before you know it. Uh, there is no way that I anticipate the North Carolina secondary uh, to have, uh, it, it's a, just a train wreck. The whole defense is a train wreck. Uh, and I can promise you this, style points are going to matter to Clemson here, no matter what. Dabo, if he has the opportunity to put 78 on this team, Cal, you know what he's going to do? He's going to drop 70, 80 points on North Carolina. Uh, interesting note here. Mac Brown, four opportunities as an underdog this year. He's covered all 
for opportunities here. So um, while I do think Clemson is going to be able to score, I think North Carolina is going to be able to score right with them. This is not going to be a 2017 game. Uh, this is more like uh, the uh, 42 to 35 uh, type of situation here. And I think that total gets obliterated here at the end. All right, Joe, loving the over in the ACC championship. Marco, I'm loving the dog. And frankly, that's because they haven't been in this spot since 2015 when these two met. Clemson, listen, when you have a national title hope each and every year, sometimes these type of games get overlooked, if you will. But now that Clemson got knocked down a couple of slots from losing to South Carolina, I kind of have to wonder how they approach this one. Mm. Well, Kelly, that's the big question of this game is with Dabo and how he gets this team because definitely they got disrespected. Tennessee, when they lost to South Carolina, only dropped a couple spots where Clemson loses by one and Tennessee got crushed. They dropped of like four spots. So big question. But you know what? You're going to have to wait for the answer because this is my best bet for the show. I'll talk about it in the best bet section. Ooh, Marco's mm. making me wait. What else is new? Saturday, also uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, Fox, 5.30, 5 p.m. Pacific. Good grief. Purdue, this one I called. I had a bunch of uh, Michigan fans getting mad at me, saying it was going to be 24-point favorites. I said, not so fast. 17 is the current number on the Wager Talk odd screen. Total 51 and a half. Marco, Jeff Brom as an underdog. Let's talk about it. Absolutely, Kelly. And I'll be honest, of all the games that we've done and we, what we did is, uh, just like we do with uh, all the TV primetime games, we wanted to cover the big five conferences. Of the five that we covered, this is my weakest vote of the five. But I'm going to be on Purdue, and it's a situational play for me. Yes, uh, we get Jeff Brom as an underdog, but I'm looking at Michigan. How satisfying was that win for Michigan on Saturday? Not only did they win the game, they went into the shoe and embarrassed Ohio State. They took Ohio State, in my opinion, right out of the conversation. I know there's people that still want to put them in there. Uh, I don't think they should be. I don't think their body of work is enough uh, even you know, to even consider them. But I'm looking at Michigan – all they got to do is win. They don't need any style points. They don't need anything else. And if you want to talk about fat and sassy, could you be any more fat and sassier than Michigan is? And I look to the fourth quarter when that game was in hand and they still were throwing the football downfield. I just, that's just a little bit too much fun. Uh, you're going to pay for that somewhere. And I think uh, they're going to sneak by in this one. They're going to win it uninspired win I have at Michigan 31 to 20 so I'm going to take those big uh inflated number with Purdue in my opinion and have them keep this one semi close enough to get the cover and Michigan will be looking forward to the playoffs uh that'll start in a few weeks Joe, my Saturday started off with that Michigan beat down so it started off really good got to end with that nice mm -hmm. K-State win so the sandwiches were there. There was a couple of spots in the middle where things weren't so great. But that Michigan team really put on a clinic. I was so happy to see them. Now, if you remember, the week prior, my best bet, Illinois. Nope. I'm not saying Purdue is going to be my best bet by any means. But I do think this is too many points. And if Jeff Brom follows what Brett Bielema did and absolutely mm -hmm. takes advantage of the couple of weak spots on this Michigan defense, I do believe they're going to keep it close. I'm not calling for an upset here or anything crazy. As Marco said, I do think this Michigan team is very solid and does deserve to be in the playoffs. But maybe they're already looking ahead uh, to a couple weeks from now. Feeling fat and sassy. What say you? Yeah, and we've also seen Michigan play to the level of their competition a number of times here. Games that they should have won going away. Games that they should have 
uh, blown teams out. Illinois comes to mind where all of a sudden they're, they, they let these teams hang around that have no business being uh, anywhere near Michigan. And next thing you know, we're sweating games out uh, in the fourth quarter and waiting for Michigan to come back. Indiana, I think, was another one of those. Um, but I, listen, Purdue... Here's what you need to know about Purdue. Aiden O'Connell, I loved him coming into this year. He's been one of the most inconsistent quarterbacks. Uh, it was not a great year for him. He's had his moments, but there have been stretches here where you're going, what in the world is uh, is going on here? Uh, 22 turnover-worthy plays, I think the stats told us, where he's put... And it all started this year with the Penn State game. Can we all started the season going, you're dead to me, Jeff Brom. You're dead to me, Purdue, because of that Penn State game where they ended up turning the ball over late and they had no business doing it. I, they have a top 30 run defense, Purdue. All right? So whether Coram goes or he doesn't go, they say he's going to go. Um, the way that you exploit this Purdue defense isn't on the ground. It's in the air. And what you guys just watched J.J. McCarthy do against that Ohio State secondary, um, let's face it, the Purdue secondary going to be a tad worse than what you just saw here with Ohio State. I think the big plays downfield uh, are going to be open, and I think it's going to be open early. I don't think Harbaugh wants to leave uh, any room for Purdue to be able to make some sort of comeback here. I think they're going to throw early. I think they're going to throw often. I think they're going to have a ton of success. Explosive plays in the passing game. That has been the nemesis for this Purdue defense all year long. And boy, oh boy, watching McCarthy throw the ball uh, like he did last week. And keep in mind, he's been absolutely phenomenal this year, too. Almost nine yards per attempt, 16 touchdowns, only two interceptions on the year. I think Michigan is going to air this out. I think they're going to have fun. And I think not only will they have the lead in the first half, but more importantly, I think Purdue and O'Connell, they'll be able to move the ball and get some points too. I'm going over in the first half here, guys. 26 and a half. I think we have no problem uh, getting up and over three touchdowns for Michigan, maybe, uh, you know, 10 points there for Purdue. And voila, we've got ourselves an over the 26 and a half early. All right, Joe. Joe, with all these first half and total plays, mixing it up for me and Marco, taking all those barking dogs. We're going to take our last <laughs> commercial break, and then we're coming back. It's time for Best Bets. Bet on it gets 100,000 plus downloads, views, and listens each and every week across all platforms. From YouTube to Spotify, from Apple TV to iHeartRadio, there's a good chance this is the first time you're tuning in, so an even better chance that if you have not experienced the professional handicappers at Wager Talk and Sports Memo, we want to change that. Whether you are new to sports betting or just tired of the games of the year, and 100 unit locks, we have you covered. As the most popular show on Wager Talk TV, we would like to offer all bet on viewers that have not made a purchase at wagertalk.com or sportsmemo.com this special offer. Use coupon code BETONIT80 and save 80% off any one day package of $15 or more, up to a three day all access pass, which normally sells for $59. Pay only $3 for a regular price 15 package, only $7 for a 5% top play that normally will cost you $35 or pay under $4 a day when using the coupon on a three-day all-access pass. So to all first-time users, just use coupon code BETONIT80 to save 80% off your first ever purchase at Wager Talk or Sports Memo, and welcome to the family. Welcome back to Bet On It's now time for Best Bets, and I am gonna just preface this. I have a K-State 10 to one to win the Big 12 ticket, and I said I wasn't going to go crazy on this line. I made the game a pick I tweeted it out. I said, there's no way this is going over a field goal at the most. If TCU looks super great against Iowa State, this line will be two and a half. And here we are. This line's two and a half, total 61 and a half. Uh, I do not recommend taking the under in this game, even though uh, I know that it looks like if K-State's going to win it, they're going to need to step up defensively. But K-State has somehow, miraculously, turned into an over team. Kind of a wild thing here. We've got both teams being cover machines. Uh, TCU, as you guys know, didn't cover against Baylor, but every other game besides that. K-State didn't cover against Texas, but since then, they've covered every single game. So we're going to figure out what has to give here. And the, the big wild card is what I mentioned earlier when we spoke about this game, and that is the defense. If K-State's defense comes to play, they will win this game. 
Props to Adrian Martinez for helping us get here. Will Howard for filling in and absolutely rocking it. Marco mentioned his 13 touchdown passes to just two interceptions. Hey, the Horn Frogs, guess what? Their average margin of victory this year is 17 points, and the whole world cannot wait to go bet on them because what did they see last? That's right, the Wildcats lost to this team after having a 28 to 10 victory. I believe it was 28 to 17 halftime. And K State didn't come out of the locker room at half, but one of these teams has a lot more to play for, and that is the Horn Frogs. They win and they get into the college football playoff. Who? Who? I want to know. I don't think there's anybody that I've seen that has a. Uh, uh, a, what is it, plus 25,000 it was for TCU to win the Natty. So again, congrats to Sonny Dykes. Congrats to this TCU team. Take the better defense plus the points here uh, and pray that they're going to be healthy and uh, that Adrian Martinez maybe has a, a glimmer of an appearance, maybe on a on a quarterback sneak, something fun here. Uh, hearing that he's 50-50 for this game, I will tweet out if I hear anything other than that. I'm going to take the two and a half here with the Wildcats. Marco D'Angelo, you're up next for your best bet in the ACC. All right, Kelly, I am looking at North Carolina, and I've bashed North Carolina all year with their defense, and there's no question, North Carolina's defense sucks. But as bad as that defense has been, the offense has been just as good. So let's dig a little bit deeper in here and see what we're going to do. We talked about how does Clemson respond to losing last week. Any hope of playing for a national championship went out the window with that second loss. We talk about the dream crusher theory. I also look at this North Carolina team, and although that defense is bad and the offense is good, what's that translate to? Well, if you blindly played every North Carolina game this season, and just bet the underdog in that game, you would have gone nine, two, and one against the spread. Now, I'll preface one of the games, they actually started out a favorite, but closed the dog, and they ended up winning that game, and that was the Appalachian State game the second week of the season. So by the closing number, the dog is nine, two, and one in North Carolina games. And I'm going to ride that here. I don't think Clemson can get themselves back up. And I also look at this Clemson team. And when you think of Clemson, you always think about a powerful offense, but you also think about a stellar defense. That's not been the case this year. Wake Forest scored 45 on them. Florida State scored 28. Notre Dame scored 35. And South Carolina scored 31. Guess what? North Carolina's got the best offense of those teams. So I see a lot of points here. That bodes well for Joe's play on the over. I can't argue that. But I'm going to ride with North Carolina and back Brown to get me the job done. Should be a barn burner. Team with the ball last wins it. And I'm going to say it's going to be North Carolina 35-34. Oh, Marco says, don't forget to sprinkle. All right. I, too, like North Carolina there to win that one and go over the total for Joe. Joe, best bet. Where are we going? Because uh, I'm looking at this going, we didn't cover this game. No, we didn't. But I lost my ass on Tulane a couple of weeks ago taking on UCF. And now we get a rematch, Cal. This is another one of the uh, the rematches um coming up on this slate of championship games the american athletic championship tulane will be hosting just like they did a few weeks ago against the ucf team um the total in this game is where i'm focusing uh although uh tulane uh three three and a half they were a two and a half favorite a couple of weeks ago uh when they met and the one thing that stuck out to me and tulane lost that game because uh they turned the ball over they lost the turnover battle four turnovers three early before they knew it it was 28 uh, to 7 in that game and that was all she wrote but the one thing to take away from that game 343 yards rushing uh for UCF in that one the total guys uh was I think 38 31 was the final it was 69 points could have been even more points um uh, both offenses were really really good and UCF there um has the opportunity to really mimic what they did I don't think we're going to see anything different from Gus Miles on and UCF in this matchup they are going to have the opportunity to have success 
on the ground. And Gus Malzahn, he's been in some big games uh, like this. This uh, game, in fact, over the last five years is 4-1 and one to the over. Uh, 62-55 uh, the last time UCF was in it. 56-41 uh, back in 2018. This game has got over written all over it. Although I, I like Tulane to win this game and exact some revenge. Man, everything that I saw watching that game leads me to believe that it ain't going to change. We're going to have both offenses having a ton of success. And before we know it, there's going to be 60 points on the board, which is going to be more than enough to go up and over the total of 56 and a half, 57 right now. I like both teams to get into the 30s here uh, in a final score. Give me the over with the American Athletic Championship. All right. I lied. I'm really sorry, guys. I said that that was our last commercial break, but it wasn't because we got one more and then it's time for the recap. Do you want to bet this college football bowl season alongside Dave Koken and Ralph Michaels? Well, we have you covered. When you look among the list of our handicappers, some are known more for specific sports. And when you mention college football, two that jump out are Dave Koken and Ralph Michaels. Mr. Dave Koken has been the all-time profit leader in college football since he joined Wager Talk. And while the regular seasons have been profitable, his performance in the Bulls have been even better going 45-22-1, that's 67%. Ralph Michaels was a previous general manager of Phil Still Publications, voting on all significant college football awards, including the Heisman Trophy, before joining Wager Talk. Ralph's run in bowl action has been stellar going 44-20, and 20, that's 69%. Our bowl package price will be $199 with the $149 early bird, but you can lock in Dave and Ralph's both for only $198, coming out to just $99 each. That's Dave's 68% and Ralph's 69% bowl records, including any 5% best bets released in bowl season for just $198. Access will cover any college football releases from the Bahama Bowl on Friday, December 16th, through the College Football Playoff National Championship game on Monday, January 9th, from both Ralph Michaels and Dave Koken, and include any 5% best bets. So act fast before pricing goes back to regular price. College football championship weekend. It is time for the recap. Pac-12 Friday night. Marco and I like the Utes. Joe likes the first half under 34 and a half. Big 12 championship. K-State across the board. I always hate when the talking heads on any channel pick it across the board, but I'm very happy that everybody in this group is on my Kansas State Wildcats. SEC, Marco said, Look, it's going up. You're late to the party, but he likes Georgia minus 17 and a half. They run away with it in the second half, according to Joe, who has taken LSU first half plus 10. I also like that LSU first half plus 10. That's a nice happy medium in between what I was looking at there. ACC matchup, Marco and I on the heels. Don't forget to sprinkle a little bit on the money line, not just seven and a half. And Joe Ranieri says over 63 and a half. This is going to be an absolute and utter shootout. For the Big Ten, Marco and I agree with the Boilermakers. Joe said he's not so sure about that, but what he is sure of is a first half over 26 and a half. Best bets for me, Kansas State. Best bet for Marco, UNC plus seven and a half. And best bet for Joe, he's taking the over UCF two-lane AAC championship game. You guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us every single week here for college football edition of Bat on it. I promised you guys we would not go away too quietly. We'll probably be back for maybe one, if not two, bowl previews from myself, Marco, Joe, Ralph, our producer Dan, and our graphics guy, Will. Until next week, two weeks, maybe three. Let's bet on it.